So gaze control, why do we call it gaze? Why don't we say we're gonna look at eye movements? Because gaze is, is, a, is a combination of where the head is and where the eyes are. And let's say that we wanted to shift our gaze. What would typically happen is that there is uh, initially a, a change in eye position, uh, which is followed by a, or accompanied by a much slower change in head position, but the, the two together give you a steady change in gaze position. So gaze is eye plus head. For example, if we're reading a book, we're gonna use virtually 100% eye movements, not head movements. It's not, you're not reading in this direct, in this way. You're reading just by shifting your eyes. And you should actually watch a friend, a consenting adult read, just watch their eyes move and you'll see that their head's not moving. Their eyes are just moving back and forth. Um, okay, so what, what are the important things about, uh, about uh, how we move our eyes and how, how we control gaze? Um, one thing is that if we didn't do this, one thing is, is somewhat trivial, which is that if we were completely still, which is not really doable, um, but if you were completely still, the, the world, the visual image that you have would fade. We depend, as I hope you understand from our time talking about the visual system, we depend on edges, and those edges can be either in space, there's an edge between a dark area, a dark line and a, and a light line, or they can be in, in time, so that there's a change, there's a movement in the visual uh, image. And if there's no change in this visual image, if, my, if I'm looking at a mountain and that mountain is not moving, which it's not, I will move my eyes, and I will move my eyes by just a tiny little bit, and that prevents visual fading from occurring. So that's one type of eye movement. Um, and it's called a micro saccade. We'll get back to that uh, much, much later. On a more s sort of lofty level, eye movements and, and gaze tells us a lot about a person. So we, we talk in terms of a person, oh, that's a shifty-eyed shifty person as though that person's not trustworthy because they don't keep their eyes in one place. Or that's a, that person has a steady gaze, uh, look me right in the eye. So we are inferring a lot of very lofty qualities from our description of how people move their eyes. Moreover, there are a number of neuropsychiatric uh, disorders, such as uh, the two that have been studied uh, the most that I'm aware of are autism, and uh, schizophrenia, which are accompanied by uh, eye movements that are different from what um, uh, most healthy controls um, make, the eye movements that most healthy controls make. There is another place where uh, gaze is absolutely critical, and that is in making a social bond. And the place where we know the most about this is in, uh, is in, a, in the attachment of a baby with, with an adult. So when the baby and the adult look at each other and lock their eyes, there is a brain response um, that it enhances that attachment. Now we can't do experiments in babies and, and, and parents quite as easily as we can with people and their dogs. And um, a, a, a really um, creative neuroscientist, Takafumi Kikasui, uh, has looked at the function of gaze between uh, people and their pets, and their dogs, I should say, people and their dogs. Okay, or only, do do only dogs. Um, and so the longer the amount of, of, uh, of eye to eye gaze, the more uh, hormone that is released inside the brain. So this, and this is thought to not only bond uh, humans to their dogs, but also to bond parents to their children. So it's real, gaze is a really, really important piece of life. Um, it's not, 
It is, do not think of it in any way as, as trivial or even as um, mundane, complicated, interesting, but mundane. It is not. It is lofty. It tells us a lot about who we are. It is a big expression of who we are. All right. So in the next video, we're going to talk about the different types of gaze.